Welcome everyone to the three keys to attract your sacred soulmate with Shea Love. My name is Dr. Onani Carver. I met Shea in California at a woman's business retreat and I was struck by her aliveness and her smile and just her zest for life. I know she will be imparting some great wisdom today. Shea is a sacred relationship coach, author, trainer, and inspirational speaker. She mentors single women to attract their soulmate and is dedicated to supporting women finding their deepest fulfillment in love and life. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you to Shea Love. Yay, thank you so much, Onani. Um, I feel really blessed and honored to have met you and to have you in my life and to have your support. It really means a lot to me. Yay, and welcome everyone to the three keys to attracting your sacred soulmate. Um, you did it, you're here, you did whatever it took to, yeah, carve this time for yourself to affirm that a relationship, a sacred relationship is important to you. And by doing so, by taking action and actually showing up, you sent a really strong message to the universe and you really, yeah, really affirm something really important. Um, so I celebrate you and honor you. And I invite you to just take a moment to do a little celebratory shimmy. Yay. So. Um, I just want to affirm that you're in the right place. If you, yeah, you just, you know, in your heart, you have that desire, that longing to be in a relationship that is deep and loving and beautiful and magical and, uh, yeah, just healthy and lasting, right? And you're tired of attracting partners that aren't a good fit for you. You know, a lot of my clients come to me with that frustration of, why do I attract the same person, but in a different form, right? The same challenges, the same issues. Um, you know, often it's someone who's non-committal or has addiction issues or, um, yeah, isn't supportive, you know, all these different things. And, um, and as a result of it having lack of success in relationship, you may get to this place where you are doubting whether this relationship thing is possible, whether it even exists or whether it's personally possible for you. And yet deep in your heart, you just, you imagine, you know that there is more to life, that there is an aspect of your being that needs to be expressed, the lover of you, part of you, right? That wants to have someone to share life with, to have that companion, to be there, to celebrate with, to, um, hold you when things aren't going well, right? You, you long for that and, and you know, you can have that. And I'm just taking a stand for you having that. And, you know, as long as you're ready to take full responsibility for your happiness um, and for doing whatever it takes to move through, to clear whatever's in the way, you can truly have that relationship that will last. So I invite you to get excited. And I want to invite you to be able to get the most of this training to really make this time sacred. And so let's just take a moment right now to take a few deep breaths. Oh, and I invite you to place your hands on your heart. Hmm. And tune in to your heart and that desire, that longing for connection, for sharing your love and your life with someone and honoring yourself again for showing up, for taking a step towards making that a possibility for you. Yay. So I also invite you to remove all distractions, right? You know, this, you, you made this time, you're here, get the most out of it. Close all the other browsers, turn your phone to silent, just drop in, close your door, light a candle if you like, just to really affirm like this is sacred for you. This is something that really means a lot to you. And I'm gonna invite you to engage throughout the training. Um, when you engage, you uh, get the learnings more integrated. You, um, 
have what you're sharing, what's happening for you witnessed and affirmed, you get that you're not alone, right? And um, there's actually scientifically proven that when there is engagement in the learning process, it accelerates your learning. You get it more in your, it, it locks it in more into your uh, psyche, into your body. So I invite you to engage and I invite you to stay to the end. Um, I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to guide you through a magnetic heart meditation. Um, before that, I'm going to um, let you know about some of the other work that I do and give you an opportunity to join if you like. Um, and then have a pen and paper handy to take notes, have some tea on hand, some water. Yeah, and again, just take some deep breaths and drop into your heart. And, mm, just get excited about what can be possible by learning the three keys to attracting your soulmate. Um, so I imagine you're here because you desire that committed lasting relationship that's based on like really what's important to you, what your deepest um, values are, your passions, and that's full of respect with someone who really honors you and um, is devoted to you. And uh, I have that. This is me and my beloved, and um, I really know what it takes to get it. I've so been in that journey of, um, yeah, having relationships that don't work. So my story, um, this is me as Titania, the queen of the fairies in my high school play. Uh, I was obsessed, I am obsessed with fairy tales because um, I didn't have um, a, a great childhood or good modeling as a child. Uh, my parents uh, split up when I was five and um, the strongest memory I have of my parents is um, my mom, them fighting and my mom throwing a sugar bowl across the, the room and it's smashing on the wall. So I'd wear these huge headphones and listen to fairy tales and imagine my prince coming to take me away and give me that life and that relationship that, that the fairy tales talk about. Um, so I don't know if you can relate to that. Oh, and I actually, I would love to invite you to uh, introduce yourself. Say hi, hey, um, where you're from. And yeah, if you resonate with um, fairy tales and that fairy tale love uh, idea, you know, you can say, gotcha, I'm with you. And um, actually, I'm going to open up the chat so I can see who's here. I'm just so excited to share with you. Let's see, where is it? Uh, chat, there we are. So yeah, if you're here and you want to say hi, by all means, I would love to um, know that you're here. So um, yeah, so I would listen to those fairy tales, envision my future being different, being perfect, and, um, and yet um, relationship was one of the things that kept eluding me. I went like 17 years of failed relationships. I had a failed marriage. I had, um, I kept attracting partners that weren't supportive that weren't available, that were non-committal, that were disloyal even, and I even had an abusive relationship. So I know that pain of uh, not being fulfilled, not being met, um, yeah, and, and not being respected or honored. And I know that for me, I was attracting that because I had really low self-esteem, I had abandonment issues uh, from you know my parents, splitting, my dad leaving, those kinds of things. And um, yeah, so, you know, it never occurred to me to seek that within myself. And, um, but then I, I thought actually I met my prince. And so I don't know if you've ever had that experience of thinking you met the one and uh, he was blonde and handsome and talented. He played musical instruments, but he was also a very successful business man. He drove a BMW, was building this big mansion on the river. And uh, we just like totally fell in love. And we're talking about marriage and children. And I was like, yay, my fairy tale is coming true. Um, but uh, he started to pull away. And I started to, you know, because of that abandonment stuff, started to freak out a little bit and like confronted him on it. And he got even more scared and said that he wanted to go to just being in touch by email. 
And, you know, of course that really upset me. <laughs> we were going from like talking about marriage to like just emailing, being pen pals. And I totally flipped out being the fiery redhead that I am. And that completely scared him off. And I never heard from him again. And of course I was absolutely devastated and crushed and convinced that I was unlovable, that relationship wasn't going to happen for me and that there was something wrong with me. And, uh, and yet in my heart, I had this deeper longing knowing that relationship was a part of my path. That that's what I was here for. I was a lover. I was here to love and express that love. And so I wouldn't give up. And instead I ended up choosing to work with a mentor who um, helped me to really go deep into like, what were those childhood wounds, the work on my daddy stuff, my abandonment issues. And in doing that work, I had this revelation and I got to the point where I realized uh, as long as I kept seeking that love, that happiness, that fulfillment outside of myself, it was never going to last. And I got that I needed to start sourcing love within myself, respect within myself, joy, fulfillment, happiness from myself. And so with the support of my mentor, I went to, uh, I made it a project to, you know, start looking at what brought me joy and making my life more about that. I would dance more and go out in nature more. And I um, committed to writing a book. And the biggest thing that I did was to commit to fulfilling a lifelong dream I have had, had had of going to live and work in the tropics. So that winter, I moved to Costa Rica. I was, had this toy love affair with myself in that beautiful tropical country, swimming in the ocean, hiking in the jungle. And I finished writing my book. I uh, did yoga, surfing, dancing all the time. And I came back from Costa Rica in the spring, like glowing, literally glowing, you know, from the sun, from my joy, um, from that sense of fulfillment of completing my book. And what do you think happened? Just a few months later, I met my beloved. And, um, and he is incredible. He meets me in every way possible. I can be my wild, wacky self with him and not hold anything back. In fact, he's constantly like asking for more of me, like wanting me to be the fullest, freest expression of myself. And um, he's so there for me, solid support, believes in me. And we just got married this summer. So I had my fairy tale wedding. And um, it's so phenomenal to finally be with someone who is equally committed to creating an incredible life with, and we have a lot of magic. And we have the wisdom to navigate those challenges that life presents to, and we're in it together. So just take a moment to feel into your heart and to let my story land and evoke, provoke, whatever it may. And um, just, yeah, if that's something you want, if you want to work through whatever is in the way and, and really source that self-love, that self-respect so that you attract someone who will meet you there and treat you with honor and respect. I invite you to affirm that by like saying yes in your heart and typing yes in the comments. So um, yes, send a clear, strong message to yourself and to the universe because your beloved is waiting for you. And all that it really takes is for you to come into alignment with yourself you know, like I said, like what's important to you, what are your values, what are your passions, and to really keep affirming them and living them so that you can um, stand in that knowing that this is the life that you want and you want someone who will meet you there and share those with you, who will be aligned with you and what's important to you. And it takes doing some work. It takes clearing, clearing, um, what, you know, we're going to get into that more, but it, um, that's one of the keys. So we'll get into that. And it takes boosting your radiance and, um, you know, so that you become that magnet and attract your beloved and someone who's like um, a deep soul connection, not just personality to personality. And because of that soul connection will last and stand the test of time. 
So I invite you to welcome uh, this mastery class, Love Mastery class as an opportunity to really see like what is available for you. Sometimes when um, we learn things, uh, we get triggered and we're like, we go into like, oh, this isn't going to happen for me. There's too much wrong or whatever. And I just want you to know there's nothing wrong. There's nothing to fix. And it's just an opportunity for a greater expansion and a greater yes for what is in your heart. So get curious and stay open. So um, yeah, some of you may know I hosted the Irresistible Woman Retreat a couple weekends ago where 38 women had, we had this incredible transformational experience of really getting in touch with um, what's important, what's in our hearts and um, doing, going, and I taught the, the Holy Trinity, what I call the Holy Trinity of attracting your beloved and being an irresistible woman. And these are the three keys that we're going to cover today, the three keys to attract your sacred soulmate. And I really see them as a sacred, holy trinity because they're the three aspects of our being, right? Our spirit and, um, you know, the sp your spirit knows who you are and what's possible for you. So it's really important to really continue to dip in and connect to and honor your spirit. Um, and um, that's where your power is when you can connect to that. And then there's um, the masculine aspect. We all have masculine within us. And that is the part that like um, is consciousness and clarity and intention and um, is protective and stands in that worthiness of having what you want. And then there's the feminine, the lovely, juicy energy of um, movement and senses and light, right? And love. And that is who you really are uh, at, in your essence. So um, yeah, it's amazing when you can really get in touch with and begin to activate, cultivate, and strengthen all three of these areas of your life. So uh, key number one is that realm of the spirit, right? Getting feisty. And um, how you do that is to really get in touch with your desires. Your desires uh, are actually your um, compass to what your spirit is here for, what your spirit is wanting to experience in this life, right? So often we're told that you shouldn't want things and if you want something, you'll be disappointed. And so we, protect ourselves and we kind of shove these desires down and we just go about living our mediocre life and being thankful for what we have, which is important, of course, to be grateful for what we have. And what my experience has been in my own personal life and what I've witnessed in all my clients is when we get in touch with an honor and embrace and get excited about our desires and it awakens this energy, this fire, and, and opens us up to even more possibility and expansion of our being. So um, I'm going to invite you to take a few moments to really, again, put your hands on your heart. Take a few deep breaths and really listen. Take some time to listen to your heart to your spirit that speaks to you through your heart. What are your deepest desires in the realm of relationship, of a sacred relationship? What is it that you fully long for? What does a sacred relationship mean to you? And why do you want it? This is a big piece of that feistiness because the why is that driving force that helps us to get through the challenges, the barriers that come up when we do want something because they will come up. It's just the way the human experience and life is. Um, yeah, you know, after the Irresistible Woman retreat, my intention and in, in, in my mission, my desire is to have um, my Creating Lasting Love program filled with 16 incredible women. And um, I have six and I, you know, there's more that I know are calling in. And 
you know, I left that retreat with those six women and my intention to have more. And then all my stuff, my gremlin started to come up about like, are you, can you really do this? Who do you think you are? And all the doubts about whether this was possible for me. And, um, and I had to do some work around that. Um, and we'll get to that with key number two, but what really kept me going through it was that feisty fire of knowing like, this is my life's purpose. This is my mission. I'm here to take a stand for love. I'm here to support women to open to love within themselves and with another and to be fulfilled in that area. And, and as a result of that strong connection to my spirit and my, my mission, my desire, um, I was able to keep walking and taking steps. You know, I booked this, this, um, this class, this online class to reach more women, to get in touch with more women, to serve more women. And I, instead of collapsing and saying, no, I can't do this. And so it's like the fire, the feistiness, the spirit, the why keeps us taking those steps despite whatever the gremlins will say, whatever um, barriers will arise. So um, if you've gotten in touch with uh, a bit of what it is that you long for, like what quality of connection and your why, I invite you to share that. Share that in the chat, share that on the Facebook page if you're watching live on Facebook and in the comments and, or even if you're watching this later in the recording, you know, um, write it down. And, you know, at the end of this, um, this class, take even more time to go inward and to like really get in touch with that deep desire and start keep honoring it and fueling it and voicing it and, and um, celebrating that you have this desire and it's good and it's healthy and it's a beautiful thing and it's it's um, what brings us alive, right? So yeah, and as a result of that feistiness, that spirit, you get to choose, consciously choose what you want to believe and, and what you want to live by. And um, so key number, so we talked about like, I've mentioned the, the barriers, the gremlins, right? And oops, so that leads me to key number two. So key number two is, um, yeah, it's like I said, no matter what intention you set, uh, there's, when we set an intention for something that's really important, if there's stuff in the way, it's gonna come up. It's going to come up and, and we can be shut down and discouraged and um, crushed by those things that come up, or we can let that feisty commitment and intention fuel our ability and our willingness to move through those barriers. And this is the key number two, is that commitment and that willingness to get clear. And um, it's so essential to, you know, be able to live more freely, live more um, of an expansion of who we are, um, to be able to um, free ourselves and to shift and dissolve or repattern our ways of thinking, our ways of being our behaviors, um, our even energetically, our energetic patterning. You know, if you've been attracting partners that um, you know, are the same, but in a different form, it's because there's unfinished business there, right? There's things from your past that are unresolved. And um, the amazing thing is, is when they arise and when you're willing to face them, you can do what it, do the work to resolve them, to get those lessons, to um, complete that karma, or at least to get greater awareness of what they are so that um, when it does arise, you can meet it with love and compassion and consciousness and have be more at choice rather than in the reactivity. So if you are wanting to be more free from uh, unfinished business from the past 
or if you're wanting to, yeah, have resolution with any of those core wounds that um, happened in your childhood, which we all have, you know, from either our parents or relatives or um, colleagues, or not colleagues, um, cl classmates, you know, in school. I was also bullied a lot when I was a kid. And that wounded girl has come up a lot to be healed and loved and integrated. And as a result of doing that work with my younger part, that young wounded girl, um, I've been able to shift my experience of feeling really isolated. I don't belong. Um, I don't feel connected to being able to notice when that happens to um, go and actually make connection. And so whenever I, I used to be like, whenever I went into a big space with lots of people, I would go into like kind of this fight or, fight or flight um, mode and just like, ah, and I'd just kind of flitter around like a butterfly and be all surface and, and um, leave that gathering um, um, unfulfilled, feeling empty, feeling not connected. And now when I go to gatherings, um, if that little girl is like feeling shy and um, scared, what I know to do now is I actually look for someone in the room who lights up, who I feel a call to connect with, and I will go to them and actually create a connection. And that is the freedom that is possible when we identify these parts that are wounded, that um, need some healing, some love, some integration. And as a result, then we can be at more choice and have freedom in how we relate. And then also more freedom to uh, create and attract uh, relationships that are based on uh, more healthy, conscious awareness of ourselves and what we want. So if you are wanting to be free and clear so that you can attract a beloved uh, who, yeah, has a healthy dynamic that you, who gets you, who understands you, who will honor you and all of you, um, then I invite you to type, yes, I do. Um, it sounds like the, the um, what is that? The vows of a, of a wedding and um, yeah, it is like you keep affirming, yes, I do, yes, I do and for yourself. And, um, and so I just invite you to take a few moments to think of like when you put your attention on relationship, like what is that thorn that comes up that like, oh, that pain point for you? Is it something that's incomplete with your uh, parents, some unfinished business or something unfinished or incomplete with a past relationship? Um, yay, there's a, I do, awesome. Yeah, Joanne, I honor you for affirming that for yourself. Um, or maybe there's, um, yeah, you know that there's a pattern within yourself of like being triggered, like what are your triggers? So take a moment to reflect on that and journal that down. And if you're feeling brave and courageous, you could write that in the, the, the chat box or the comments. And again, when, when you do uh, share, it's, uh, there's power in being witnessed and it releases some of that hold on you and creates some space so that you can see, oh, I could be at choice with this. And you also get that you're not alone, right? When you hear and see that other sisters are struggling, having the same kind of struggles. So um, yeah, I just invite you to be courageous and to share. And, um, and if you're not willing to share here, you can maybe send me a personal message later and let me know what insights you've gotten, what, what patterns of, of um, stuff has arisen that you wanna get clear on. And I just wanted to let you know that um, yeah, this is a big piece of the work that I do with my clients in my Creating Lasting Love program and my Heal Your Heart programs. And um, it's such an essential piece because if you, if you want to uh, 
ex attract someone on that next level of healthiness of consciousness rather than based on the old patterns and old um, habits of, and old beliefs, right? You want to clear all that out. And so, um, yeah, I love doing this work with my clients. So key number three, let's all take a deep breath. Ah, this is the realm of the feminine. And this is uh, what I like to call get juicy because juiciness is like that feeling of yumminess and sweetness and um, yeah, aliveness that the feminine brings and allows in our life. And so um, what I've experienced and, and noticed in a lot of the clients that come to me is um, we're tired, right? We're tired. A lot of um, the women I work with are business owners or single moms, and you've got a lot going on, right? You're probably running your masculine a lot. You're doing, 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 you're getting things done. You've got your to-do list, you're in the doing mode, and you're, um, yeah, just in that masculine energy of like uh, pr productivity, and um, even if, yeah, if you're working for a company, you're just like productivity and getting things done, and, you know, it's amazing. And, and the masculine is more um, honor, is more um, uh, valued, right, in society. So we think like we need to run the masculine more in order to, you know, get things done and get acknowledged and get the paycheck and get all the things, right? And the feminine isn't valued as much. We're like, oh, that's luxurious, right? that's indulgent. Um, and yet, when I work with my clients and help them to bring more of the feminine into their lives, to awaken more of their feminine essence, to bring more of that softness, that yumminess, that pleasure into their lives, then um, their lives become more joyful, easeful, flowing, um, have you had that experience of like being in the zone and synchronicities happen and just there's like the sense of ease and flow? Well, that comes from the feminine. Um, I mean, it comes from all three elements being in place, but if we don't have that feminine, then it's just, it's very hard and it's, we're in that kind of warrior mode and we're getting things done and, and we need that energy to kind of, to get us through the barriers and to you know, have that intention and commitment, but that's what makes it hard. So if life has been hard for you, if it feels like a battle, if you're tired a lot, if you have pain in your body often, I used to be in chronic pain all the time. And it's been a result of working, of cultivating my feminine, um, that I have like, yeah, I feel good in my body. I have energy when I wake up, um, I used to like wake up so heavy and have to drag my bed out of bed. I don't know if you can relate to that. Um, let me know if you do. Um, so I know I'm not alone in it. And I know I'm not alone because, you know, a lot of my clients come to me in that way, like, oh, and I just want you to know that there's this whole juicy, yummy way of being in life that, um, brings, yeah, greater ease and grace and joy in your life. So that's for you. But guess what? As a result of you being getting more juicy and radiant and um, happy and um, yummy in your body, you become, what do you think happens? What do you think happens? Anyone want to take a guess? What's the result? What's the benefit? What's one of the benefits that you would really want? I mean, imagine since you're here, um, you become more attractive, right? You become an attractive force. You become magnetic. You light up and um, you attract um, someone at that higher vibration who is who gets that you're, you know, you are a strong um, woman who is committed to her health, her well-being. Um, 
Yes, charming to all the people around you. Exactly. You got it, sister. <laughs> yeah, true magnetic, more magnetic and attractive. Absolutely. So this is what you want, right? You want to be magnetic and you want to attract someone um, who's going to like, yeah, um, support you and honor you in that feminine element of your life so that you can have that and also bring that into the other person's life, right? And, and inspire and um, bring more of that juiciness into the relationship. And of course, Part of this is the sexual fulfillment and the, um, yeah, to like really have a fulfilling and passionate sex life. You really, you know, it's essential to be in touch with that feminine essence. So, you know, really this takes practice softening and opening your heart. So I invite you to take a few moments to breathe in and around your heart space. Ah, let out sound on the exhale. Sounding is very feminine way of being. Ah. Mm -hmm. Smile into your heart. Mm. And when you soften and open your heart, then that allows more love and compassion to be available for you when you're doing this work around getting clear and you become that safe haven for yourself. And this is one of the, the big, so at the Irresistible Women Retreat, I had an honorable man council where I had five men who are in committed relationships share their wisdom of like what it takes to um, have a lasting relationship. And one of the things that they shared that the women and, and me just like light bulbs went off and it was such a big piece to get is that, you know, as we need to be a safe haven, not only for ourselves, but for our partners so that they, you know, we all have those wounded parts. We all have, um, we all want to be able to be vulnerable. And women are often saying like, I want my man to be more, more emotionally available. I want him to be more vulnerable with me. Well, guess what? You need to be that space for, for your partner to show up as vulnerable and to show up and share their emotions. And so that takes you cultivating that. And that's the realm of the heart. That's the realm of compassion and love. And that is within you and so possible. And again, this is such a wonderful, juicy, sweet, tender, um, piece that I work with my clients to like cultivate that aspect within themselves for themselves and to cultivate the skills the ability to like be a great listener to hold space for your beloved so that they can be vulnerable with you and you can have that intimate um, deep connecting that you long for um, yeah, and then, um, so just take a breath into that if you want that, if you long for that, if, then I invite you to say, oh yeah, and um, type that in the, the comments in the chat box, just like affirm that, like, oh yeah, um, I want to be that safe haven for myself, yes, <laughs> right on, um, for yourself and for your beloved. And um, yeah, and then, you know, you, like I said, you know, as you cultivate that feminine yumminess, you bring more joy to your own life. And then of course, to your relationship. And it's just so yummy to be a woman and to connect to you and keep awakening, cultivating that feminine essence. Um, so those are the three keys that um, I have identified and support my clients in cultivating and growing into and um, yeah, being so that you can, yeah, really be that strong stand for yourself um, to be a clear space for a new relationship, a new quality relationship that you get to create based on your values and who you are and free from those limitations of your beliefs in the past and one that's full of juiciness and yumminess and um, pleasure and intimacy, right? So 
um, because it's, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you are a lover, right? The fact that you have this longing in your heart to share your love and your life with someone, it's your destiny. You know, I felt that through my whole life, all those failed relationships. I kept going because I knew that this was a, a very essential aspect of my being that needed to be fulfilled. I, I was here to love and be loved and to grow my capacity to love and be loved. And so if that resonates with you, I just want you to know that you don't have to do life on your own anymore. If you have any of those um, tendencies to be like independent and self-reliant and you feel lonely and you feel isolated, you have a choice. You can rewire, repattern yourself to be in relationship. And this is the work that I do um, with my clients. Um, because it's in the heart of another that we truly heal. One of my teachers, my mentors taught me this. And, you know, our wounds are created in relationship. So, you know, if you're trying to do it on your own, if you're trying to figure it out on your own, and you're wondering, like, why aren't things changing for you? It's because we are wired for relationship. That's what we're here for. We're here to be in relationship. And you can, and, and, one thing that I really want you to get to is like, there's no shame. There's no shame in the fact that you haven't had success yet. There's no shame in the fact that you have had failed relationships. There's no shame in the fact that you don't have good communication skills. We weren't taught these things. You know, we're not taught about how to be a good relationship person. We're not taught these relationship skills. And so like anything, if you want to become a good musician, you need to learn, you need to find a good teacher, you need to learn the skills and practice the skills. If you want to um, become a good business person, you know, you need to find someone who's good at business and get them to teach you like what it takes, what are the skills, what are the tools. And, you know, I firmly believe that that's the same with relationship. And that's why I've devoted 15 years of my life to studying and training and learning and cultivating myself um, to be a, a really good communicator, to know how to consciously relate, to cultivate my feminine. And I know that's why I have the most incredible relationship that I have. And um, I want that for you. I'm no different than you and you can have that. So some of you um, are just like, yes, this is, I'm ready. I know that I'm tired of trying to do this on my own and I'm ready to like, just get um, that support that I need to have that mentor, that guide who's been through it, who has the relationship, the quality of connection that I want. And you might wanna just jump right in to my eight month sacred journey called Creating Lasting Love. And um, if so, go ahead. Like I would be honored to support you. There's 10 spaces left and I'm taking applications. It starts in November. Um, when I first heard about my mentor, I didn't really, I'd heard about her, I'd heard her speak once. And there was just this knowing that I was ready. I was ready, you know, when you're like, um, when you're ready, the teacher, the teacher shows up. <clears throat> so if you're like, yeah, it's just a really clear yes, then go ahead and sign up. Um, or at least send in your application and I'll be in touch with you um, about whether it's a good fit and we'll have a conversation and feel that out. And there's the link. Um, so you can go to that registration page. But some of you, you may, oh, and I just wanted to share uh, one of the women who took my Creating Lasting Love program, Geneva. Um, she had just come out of um, recovering from um, breast cancer and she was really frustrated with you know, attracting boys that weren't um, treating her well, that were playing games. And she just realized she was done. She was, you know, sh she realized life is precious, you know, when you face a, li a life threatening. And she, she was like, I, I want this. I want a relationship and I want to work through whatever is in the way. So she said yes to the Creating Lasting Love program. And she like played full out. She, she fully um, did all the practices I taught her and the tools and, and um, got all the support to 
like repattern herself and get that she deserved a quality connection. And she has met this incredible man. Um, there's a video of them on my website. You can see under the, on the Creating Lasting Love registration page. So if you want to see them together, they're so beautiful. And I found out two weeks before my wedding that they had found each other and I just found it the most um, beautiful wedding gift. Um, so you can have that too. You can find your beloved. So if eight months feels like, whoa, that's way too much. I'm just getting to know you. Um, and, but you know, you want to get support and you want to start dating first before you make a big commitment, right? I get it. I totally understand. Um, so that's why I have the six week heal your heart, reopen to love program. This is an opportunity for you to just start to get a foundation of the tools um, and really get a sense of what it is to work with me and really start to shift those dynamics. Phase one is all about your personal power, right? The feistiness thing, getting clear on what are your values, what are your passions, so that you can really stand firm and clear in that. Um, phase two is that masculine, you know, um, really looking at clearing, like your intention for clearing and building, setting those new standards so that you can claim your worth to have the quality of relationship that you want, break through those patterns of like settling for, for partners that don't treat you well, that don't respect you. Um, I take a strong stand for you being treated well and being respected. And um, at the end of working with me, all my clients are like in that clear, strong place. So I want that for you. And then phase three is of course the realm of the feminine. Um, you'll um, yeah, get some practices and some tools to really start to cultivate that lusciousness so that you do feel desirable and attractive. And you'll start to create your new love story so that you can step into that. And um, it's a six week journey. So you'll get weekly videos with the practices, the, the guidance, the wisdom, the learnings, and I include wool mantras there so that you have something to keep focusing on. Um, we'll have a class where uh, we all get to meet on Zoom. So you get to see all the other sisters in the program and make that connection and um, yeah, get my uh, in-person support and you'll have an opportunity to ask questions and um, be guided in really embodying the learnings that you're getting. And then you'll get a private one-on-one -on -one session with me so that you get the real specialized um, guidance that you need for where you're at and what you're working with and struggling with to um, make sure that you get the best support that you need. Um, and you get the Facebook sister, sacred sisterhood support, which is incredible, like I said, to get that you're not alone. And there you can post your challenges, your celebrations, ask for support. I'll be on there regularly answering questions. And through that sisterhood, you're going to find someone to partner with um, called your beloved buddy. And you'll be able to do those practices. You'll get specific practices to do with each other to start getting those, um, getting you wired for relationship, for good communication, for helping get clear on what you want and, and voice that and stand in that. And, um, and support each other in, in cultivating your juiciness. Um, so this is Laura. She took my Heal Your Heart program in the spring and um, she was ready, she was ripe. She had been attract, had this pattern of attracting partners that were, um, yeah, just not good for her and who she had to like caretake, be that mother role, who are projects basically. Um, maybe some of you can resonate with that being projects. Um, so she was like, okay, I'm ready to be done. And um, within a few weeks, she, you know, of, of doing, implementing the tools and the practices I taught her, stepping into her power, getting clear on what she wanted, really getting that she deserved that, to deserved a relationship that was a soul connection versus these projects. Um, and as a result of that, she met her beloved just a few weeks into the program. And I'm not saying that's going to happen for all of you. I wish I could wave a magic wand and say, yes, you guaranteed will meet your beloved um, within a few weeks. I can't. Um, um, but, you know, it's totally, it's up to you. It's up to you to step in fully 
to do to implement the practices that I teach you to do the the to implement the tools to um, yeah start embodying what I'm teaching and then of course there's the element of grace right um, but what I do know is as a result of doing the work with me you will deepen and get more anchored in your knowing that you deserve a relationship and you will attract it as long as you keep steady on the path. So the investment for the Heal Your Heart Reopen to Love program is $397 and it starts Monday, October 1st. It's when you'll get your first video and runs till November 12th. And um, so there is the, oops, um, I'm just gonna type that in your forward slash heal your heart. Um, so you can go there. There's more details about the program um, and you can register. So, you know, I just, like I said, it's up to you. It's up to you to keep taking the steps, keep taking action towards what it is that you want and to know that you don't have to do it alone. You know, I'm just providing a choice, an opportunity for you to get support and to learn the skills that it takes to have a really quality connection relationship that is going to last. And um, that's what I stand in for you and I'm committed to. Everyone take a breath. Ah, yay. Um, and of course, you know, I would be so honored whether you decide to do the Heal Your Heart program or jump into creating lasting love either way. Oh, and I wanted to let you know if you take the Heal Your Heart program um, and you at the end of that decide, yeah, I'm ready to go the hall and um, to get that, that longer support for creating lasting change, then you can apply the 397 credit to the Creating Lasting Love program, just so you know. Um, yeah, that's available to you. All right, my dears. Well, I wanted to um, leave you with this number one key that I've identified to creating lasting love. There's the keys to attracting your beloved, and all of those are essential to also continue to nurture that loving connection and keeping the, you know, the juice and the passion alive and to, and to have good um, health relating. But re and, and what it takes to actually embrace all of those keys and to have a lasting relationship uh, that is healthy is, drum roll please, willingness is the key. Um, so clients come to me, um, they're dating someone and something comes up, you know, they have, there's something in their past comes up and they're like dealing with their anger issues or, you know, something that's unresolved for them, their abandonment stuff. And it's, it gets rocky, it gets challenging. And they're like, do I stay in the relationship? And my guideline for staying in a relationship um, and for continuing to nurture a connection is, are they willing? Are they willing to take responsibility for their part in it? Are they willing to do the work to heal, to transform? And as long as there's willingness, anything is possible. And in fact, a relationship, a sacred relationship, is that opportunity for healing. You can be that safe haven for each other and help each other heal your wounds and resolve relationship karmas. And it's one of the most beautiful gifts and um, spiritual path that there are is to do that work in relationship. So as long as there's willingness on both parts, anything is possible. So I want to open it up for questions. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything that I've taught so far or about um, the programs um, or about your personal journey, I would be happy to answer them. Um, you can type them into the chat and Onani, if you see any on the Facebook page, let me know. Well, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for that presentation. That was really rich and you provided so much information in just a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, I really love the idea of using a mentor 
Um, I know I use mentors quite a bit. And um, when I was younger, uh, it really helped me in my just understanding, you know, my love relationship, but really my relationship with myself. So I love that you said, you know, talked about joy and dreams and desires being the compass. That was my big, big work. You know, how can I attract a beloved if, if I don't even have anything to give? Like I wasn't giving me. Mm -hmm. And so it became so important um, that I find what is my joy? What are my dreams? What, are, what is my desire? So, and I really loved um, how you said, there's nothing to fix and just become curious, curious about oneself and curious about life and like, just let's explore and let's see it as an adventure. But here are my questions. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you, once you like find yourself and come to that, to the knowing of how to express yourself and like know when I'm constricting and, and afraid and expressing myself. And how do you balance that with the relationship? Because it's so easy to lose yourself again in the relationship. So how do you balance that self versus couple? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent question. And one I've been really aware of is such an essential piece in maintaining a healthy relationship because yeah, a lot of us fuse with our partners and we get over invested in them or want them to be like more invested in us. And um, what I have noticed in my relationship and then also it actually came out in um the honorable man council and the wise women council i had at the irresistible woman retreat is that it's really essential to commit to taking that personal responsibility for ourselves and doing our ongoing work and in my relationship we make our relationship to ourselves more important than the relationship because if i'm not um, connected to myself, if I'm not really aligned within myself, then things start going skewy in our relationship. I start getting needy. I start getting judgmental. I start getting cranky. If like, if I'm not cultivating my, my juiciness, my feminine, I'm like really confrontive and conflict, you know, we, at least we start butting heads. Right, right. So, um, it's like, it's, that's why I, I, the work that I do with my clients is so, the foundation is self. Establishing that strong relationship to self, that strong alignment within self. So and you then, actually have conversations with each other and agreements and oh yeah, yourself. It, uh -huh. And then do you, um, do you have permission? I'm just wondering how you work this in your own relationship. Like, you know, I think you're, you need time to yourself or... Yeah, absolutely. Mind each other. Do you, yeah. Yeah, we have that agreement. Like, um, cause we, some of the, one of the things I teach my clients is um, attachment styles. And my partner and I have two different attachment styles. He's more like a wave, like he wants co contact and connection when he's not feeling secure within himself. And I isolate when I'm in insecure. And so we both have that awareness of our attachment styles. And so when he's like getting too clingy, I have permission to say, hey honey, why don't you go into your art studio for a while or go for a walk or go have you know some time on your own. And he like, oh right, I'm like, and he gets back reconnected to himself and then he comes back and he's happy and, and we can connect and vice versa. If I notice I'm isolating, he has permission to like knock, d -d 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 hello, sweetheart, let's connect. And I'm like, oh, right, you know, and we, and that's one of the, again, that healing that happens within right. relationship of that sacred container, that safe haven that we create for each other and with each right. other. And then it becomes like a, an appreciation mm -hmm. where he expands your world and you expand his world. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, here's my second question. Um, so 
<clears throat> like I believe that today's relationships, like more and more people really want both commitment and passion. Like we really want sacred relationship in ways that our ancestors, our mothers and grandmothers, they didn't really have access to, right? Mm, yeah. And um, they were committed for the most part, but yeah. they, yeah. And um, so in order to have that passion, like you really need to own like you and he needs to own him like like re really masculine energy and really feminine energy which can create sparks but it can also create bigger disagreements hmm. um bigger divisions hmm. and where like in the in other relationships where people don't really speak up you know, but they may not really have those sparks of passion either. So how do you like resolve conflicts and resolve differences in, in as a, I imagine like as a creative process rather than as a budding heads process? How do you shift into creation rather than division? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, there's multiple facets to that. Um, the first thing that comes up, which may be surprising, is our commitment to uh, humor. And that that is like the primary ingredient. Like w when we are noticing that one of us is taking ourselves too seriously, that we have this, pr this agreement to call each other on it. Like, hey... You're taking, and there's this, I, I teach my clients about rule number six. It's about, you know, not taking yourself too damn seriously. And um, interestingly enough, Maji and I, my, my husband and I wrote our vows separately and we wrote rule number six into our vows. That's how essential it is. Like that's, uh, that I feel is above all so essential to diffusing conflict, to diffusing positions that we get into. Right. And you know, it's, it's, and, and coming back to like choosing love, would you rather be happy or right? Right. Exactly. That commitment to happiness, that commitment to love, that commitment to joy. And we just, that's our primary directive. And so we have permission to call each other on that. And, um, and then again, I think it comes back to what I mentioned before, you know, that commitment to taking that personal responsibility and willingness to look at our own stuff. You know, when, when I'm being a bit off, you know, Meji has permission and, and I welcome because I'm committed to growing and evolving and growing my capacity to love, not growing my capacity to be right, right? Exactly. And um, so we have that permission to call each other when we're getting too like positional or too rigid or, um, but yeah, you know, and I think as a result, we don't argue very often. And I think that's, that's why is because we have those commitments to humor and play and um, being willing to be called on, out on our stuff. So for that opportunity to grow and evolve and be better people. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Great questions, Anani. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, we're going to finish with the uh, magnetic heart meditation. We've gone a little bit over time, but it'll just be a few minutes. So I just invite you um, to close your eyes, place your hands on your heart, and take those take a few nice, deep, luscious breaths in and around your heart center. Ah, let out sound, come back to your heart, come back to the desire within your heart. To be in love, to be in love and to have love and to be able to express love and because you are love, that's who you are at your essence, at your core. And of course you long to have that be lived and expressed. So honor that, celebrate that within your heart. 
And as you honor it and celebrate it, imagine that flame of desire growing stronger and brighter and becoming like a magnet for your beloved as you affirm, as you um, celebrate this love that you are and the desire to live that love and share that love with another and see it begin to radiate out in all directions. <sighs> and deep in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul is a knowing that you are meant to share your love in your life with someone. You are. The fact that you desire it means that you are. And connect to that knowing and fuel that by honoring it and celebrating it and letting it grow in strength and width and breadth. And again, let that brighten the radiance of your heart and let it shine out in all directions. And I invite you to feel into the heart of your beloved because they do exist. And they are out there wondering where you are and when you will, they will meet you. Maji and I had this, we were like, we, we both affirmed that we were lying in bed wondering where the other was, knowing that they were out there. So feel into your beloved's heart and their knowing and their longing and let that ignite the fire in their heart and see your two hearts lit up and being that magnetic force to draw each other together. And know that you, from continuing to fuel that desire, to strengthen that, to get stronger in, in, in that feistiness, and whether you need support in that or not, however you choose, like keep fueling that fire, keep fueling that feisty fire of desire and um, let it grow stronger and um, yeah and just keep seeing you being pulled together and knowing that it will guide you in what steps to take and as you take those steps affirm and know that whatever comes up whatever barriers arise that might um, slow you down or divert you affirm, make a sacred oath to yourself that you will face those barriers and you will work through them and stay steady on your course to love. And affirm and celebrate and honor the feminine radiance and juiciness in you that wants to be lived, that wants to be freed, that wants to be expressed so that you can have more joy and become more even more radiant so that when your beloved does cross your path they will recognize you immediately and you them so take a few deep luscious conscious breaths into that ah let it bring a smile to your face ah Mm hmm yes and bring your hands together in front of your heart center as an affirmation of recognition and a gratitude for it, the knowing that you will meet your beloved and if you decide you want support in that I would be so honored and thrilled to do so and um, so yeah maybe I'll see you next week in the heal your heart program or maybe i'll see your application come in for the creating lasting love program if you want to share anything with me feel free to send me a personal email or a facebook message and i would answer any questions you have and either way whatever you do i you know whether you choose to get support from me um, or not like just keep seeking keep welcoming support in whatever way to keep walking this path of love and keep opening and growing your capacity to love and be loved and um, it was an honor to share with you and um, i bless you on your journey thank you so much for tuning in 
and for honoring your heart. Oh yes, and at the end of this, um, when you sign off, I invite you to put on one of your favorite songs and do a happy dance. And in that dancing, do make it seductive. And imagine you're like calling in your beloved and let some of that juiciness come alive in you right away. All right, so go ahead and do that. And um, I hope to connect with some of you soon. Mwah. Blessings.